How big a deal is it really to have high blood glucose levels? Obviously, it's not desirable, but is it not just a fact of life that when we get older, our blood sugar goes up a bit? And is that really all that harmful? After all, you may say, I've had high blood sugar for several years, and so far, I'm not experiencing any ill effects at all. And exactly what does high blood sugar really do to us? Well, the truth is, high blood glucose levels are a big deal. In fact, they're a really big deal. One of the problems for many diabetics and pre-diabetics is the problem of motivation. They often know what they should do, they just find it so hard to actually do it. They're simply not that motivated. But motivation comes with knowledge. And when it comes to diabetes, the more you know, the more motivated you'll be to make the changes you need to make. In this brief video, we'll look at precisely why high blood glucose levels spell bad news for all of us. This video was pulled from a blood sugar DVD series I'm producing, and this particular clip comes from the sixth video, which deals with the subject of bread and the diabetic. But before we go on to explore the subject of bread, I want to say a few words about why it is so important to keep your blood sugar levels down close to or in the normal range. I have to admit that in some ways, constantly testing my blood sugar before and after meals and foods seems sort of like a game. And I've always had an extremely competitive streak in me. I like to win. So when I see high numbers show up in my blood sugar monitor, I know I've just lost that round, and it feels terrible. On the other hand, when my blood sugar peaks out at no more than the low 100s, I feel great. I'm a big winner in this case. Thank you very much. But we need to see that checking our blood sugar and discovering the numbers which reflect how much sugar is in our blood is far more than a game. It has everything to do with our health, our longevity, and our future. Consistently high blood sugars spell doom, pain, misery, and all sorts of health complications for us in the future. Consistently normal blood sugars spell a bright future. Let's consider what some of the doctors and researchers have to say on this subject. Registered dietitian Joanne Rinker writes this, Sugary blood has a thicker, stickier consistency. You can imagine how hard it can be for thick, syrupy blood to get to the tiniest point of small blood vessels. Places like the eyes, the ears, the nerves, the kidney, the heart. And when your blood fails to circulate as it should, you end up with all kinds of complications, including feet pain, eye damage, which can lead to blindness, and the failure of various organs. The truth is, your blood was never meant to be filled with sugar and be syrupy. It is supposed to be watery and flow freely. But the higher your blood sugar levels rise, the more syrupy your blood becomes and the more damage is being done, day by day, to your body and your glands. The American Diabetes Association says this, Over time, high blood glucose levels can damage both blood vessels and nerves in your body. This can result in poor blood flow to your hands and feet in addition to your legs, arms, and vital organs. Poor blood flow to these areas increases your risk of infections, heart problems, stroke, blindness, foot or leg amputation, and kidney disease. In addition, you can either lose the feeling in your feet or have increased pain in your feet and legs. Damage to your feet can occur from mild injuries, and you may not know it. Finally, damage to blood vessels and nerves can lead to sexual problems that are difficult to treat. For all these reasons, you should make a major effort to avoid high blood glucose levels in your body. Let me repeat that last sentence once more, so you really get it. <laughs> You should make a major effort to avoid high blood glucose levels in your body. On the National Kidney Foundation website, we read these words. If your diabetes is not well controlled, the sugar level in your blood goes up. High blood sugar can cause damage to very small blood vessels in your body. Imagine what happens to sugar when it's left unwrapped overnight. It gets sticky. Now imagine how sugar sticks to your small blood vessels and makes it hard for your blood to get to your organs. Damage to blood vessels occurs most often in the eyes, heart, nerves, feet, 
and kidneys. Well, as I've said before, the deceptive thing about high blood sugar is that it doesn't happen immediately. It's not as though you eat a donut for lunch and by evening your feet are killing you and you can barely see anything. You can get by with high blood sugar for some time, perhaps many years, and feel just great. But chances are, sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. For some, it only takes a couple of years of consistently high blood sugar. For others, it may take a decade or longer. But sooner or later, it's going to get you. So when we do these blood sugar tests and demonstrate those foods that do or do not raise blood sugar, this isn't just a fun little game. Blood sugar levels are tremendously significant and have extremely important consequences about your quality of life in future years and indeed how many years you may have left. And one further thing we need to keep in mind is that it's not just high blood sugar that's hurting us. When we eat a high carb diet and stuff ourselves with breads and grains, pasta, sweet rolls, potatoes, rice, candy, cakes, and pies, we are pushing our pancreases to their absolute limit in trying to keep up with the huge carbohydrate load that we throw at it every day. Imagine buying a new car and deciding that everywhere you drive, you're going to drive it flat out. You'll push the pedal to the metal and drive that car as fast as it can possibly go, whether you're driving half a mile to the corner drugstore or across the country to see Aunt Betty and Uncle Joe. No moderation for you. Constant speed is the name of your game. Of course, nobody could do that without getting into a lot of accidents and getting a lot of tickets by the police, but let's say for the point of the illustration that you can somehow avoid accidents and tickets and that you drive your car flat out, full speed, every time you go anywhere. What would happen to your new car? That car would age before its time. Your engine would be shot in a year's time because cars are simply not made to be driven flat out all the time. Occasionally, you can drive a car that way. They can handle being pushed to their absolute limits once in a while, but they're not made to be driven at full speed all the time, everywhere, every day. Well, that, my friend, is what many people are doing to their pancreases when their diet consists of sugar and carbs at every meal with high-carb snacks in between meals. And they do this day after day and year after year. Your pancreas wasn't made for that kind of abuse, and you'll eventually blow it out. And when your glucose numbers are consistently high, that's exactly what is happening. Actually, you're damaging your body in three different ways. Number one, the high glucose levels are interfering with the circulation of your blood into your organs, and you're slowly strangling them. Number two, you're wearing out and destroying your poor, overworked, exhausted pancreas. And number three, if you're a type 2 diabetic, you're almost surely living in a constant state of high insulin levels, and high insulin, all by itself, is incredibly detrimental to your health. So you're giving yourself not the 1-2 punch, but the 1-2-3 punch. One of the simplest markers that tells you that all this is not happening to you is when your blood glucose levels are staying in or close to the normal range. When blood glucose levels are low, especially when you're eating low carb, chances are your insulin levels are in a decent range and chances are your pancreas is happy, healthy, and doing fine. The surest way to metabolic health is a low carb diet accompanied by good blood glucose levels that don't normally peak over 140. Well, that's about it. If you found the video helpful, I'd appreciate it if you'd give it a thumbs up. That way, YouTube will recognize its value and rank it higher in its search engine, and more people will be able to see it and be helped by it. And consider subscribing to our Beat Diabetes channel and then clicking on the little bell icon so that you'll be notified every time we post a new video. That's it for now. God bless, and see you in the next video.